Shiloh, Chapter 14. He's wearing this army camouflage shirt, a brown cap, and the weirdest grin that could fit on a human face. Wooey, he says, holding the rifle up with one hand as he plows through the weeds. I got her. Wooey. I know he wasn't out shooting rabbits and happened to get a doe instead because he don't have his hounds with him. Judd Travers has gone out that morning with the clear intention of getting himself a deer. I also know that if the game warden finds out about it, Judd's in big trouble because the deer he shot out of season wasn't even a buck. He slogs over through the waist-high weeds to where the doe lays. Bending over, he looks at her, walks around her a little piece, then says, Wooey, again, soft-like. That's when I come out of the woods. He's got his back to me now, his hands on the doe's front legs, trying to see can he pull her himself. Drags her a little way and stops. And when he looks up again, I'm right beside him. He whirls around. Where'd you come from, he says. Was on my way over to see you, I tell him. And for the first time, standing next to Judd Travers, I feel taller than I really am. He looks at me a moment like he don't know if he's glad I'm there or not. Then I guess he figures me being there only a kid don't matter. Look what I got, he says. Found her eating at my garden this morning. I chased her over here. That's a lie, I say. I was back in the woods watching her eat. She was coming down from the hills the other way. You went out deer hunting for anything you could get. Well, supposing I did, said Judd Travers, and he hates me worse than snot. Deer ain't in season, that's what, I answer. There's a $200 fine for killing a doe. Judd Travers is staring at me like he's about to crack me across the mouth. Way we're raised around here, children don't talk back to grown folks. Don't hardly talk much at all, in fact. Learn to listen, keep your mouth shut, let the grown folk do the talking. And here I am, shooting off my mouth at 5.30 in the morning to a man holding the rifle. Am I crazy or what? Not unless the game warden finds out there's not, Judd says. And who's going to tell him? You? All at once, I realize I got Judd Travers right where I want him. One way you look at it, it's my duty to report a killed doe. The way folks up here look at it, though, that's snitching. And if I might could tell, but bargain not to, it's something else again. It's blackmail. But like I said, I'd got to the point I'd do most anything to save Shiloh. Yeah, I say, my heart pounding like crazy. I'll tell. There's a free number to call. There is, too. It's on Dad's hunting regulation papers. Boy, I sure didn't know I was going to step into all this th when I came up here this morning. Now Judd's looking at me good, eyes narrowed down to little slits. Your pa put you up to this? No, this is me talking. Well, ain't you something now? And who's to believe you? I'll get the game warden up here. Show him the spot the doe was hit, the blood, and when he finds the deer at your place, he'll believe me. The words are coming out quicker than I could think, almost. I'll tell him he was eating my garden. And I'll say different. The new game warden won't make any allowance even if the deer was eating your garden. You just don't shoot deer out of season no way, especially a doe. Now Judd's really angry, and his words come at me like bees. What you trying to do, boy? Start up trouble? You think I can't put you in your place mighty quick? So what you gonna do, I ask? Shoot me? Travers is so surprised his jaw drops. But I'm cooking now. Nothing can stop me. Braver than I ever been in my life. Gonna shoot me like that dog I found up here six months back with a bullet in his head? Travers stares some more. I know whose bullet that was, Judd, and I told Dad, and if folks find me up here with a bullet in me, Dad'll know whose bullet that is, too. I can hardly believe the words that's coming out of my mouth. Been scared most of my life of Judd Travers, and here I am, half his size, talking like a grown person. It's because I know Shiloh's still got a chance. So what you waiting for, Judd says finally. Go get the game warden. And when I don't move, he says, Come off it, Marty. Here, you take one of those legs, I'll take another. We'll drag it to my place, and I'll give you half the meat. 
and don't tell me your ma won't be glad to get it. I don't want the meat. I want Shiloh. Now Judd's really surprised and whistles through his teeth. Boy, you come up here to set me up, didn't you? Didn't have an idea in this world you was out with your rifle, I tell him. And that's one of the first truths I told in two weeks. I come up here because it's Sunday, the day you said to bring your dog back. And I wanted you to know you got to fight me first to get him. Now I'm telling you that I mean to keep him. And you expect me to keep that deer without a fine? You'll make the trade. Whoa, says Travers. That's no kind of trade at all. If I hadn't got me a deer this morning, then what would you have bargained with? I didn't have an answer to that because I hadn't been thinking about a deal. Judd had already said he wouldn't sell Shiloh. Judd's eyes narrow down even more till it almost looks like he's asleep. I'd just bet you would tell the game warden too. Jesus' name I would. And you're saying if I let you keep my hunting dog, you're going to keep this deer a secret? I begin to see now I'm no better than Judd Travers, willing to look the other way to get something I want. But the something is shallow. Yes, I will, I tell him, not feeling all that great about it. Well, you got to do more than that, boy, because I paid $35 for that dog, and I want 40 to let him go. For the first time, I see a thin ray of hope that maybe he'll let me buy Shiloh. I'll get you the money somehow, by and by, I promise. I don't want the money by and by. I want it now, and if you haven't got it now, you work for me and pay it off. You make a deal with Judd Travers and you're only 11 years old, you take what you can get. But all I'm thinking is, dog. You got a bargain, I tell Judd, and now my feet want to dance, my face wants to smile, but I don't dare let the delight show through. You listen here, says Judd. I'll pay you $2 an hour and that comes to 20 hours to earn $40. And the work ain't easy. I'll do it, I say. Beginning now, says Judd. And I can tell he's getting a bit edgy that someone else might come through the field, wondering about those rifle shots and see how he got a doe. Help me get this deer to my trailer. I'm so glad to be getting shallow I can hardly think straight. But I'm thinking straight enough as I help drag that doe to Judd's to know that by letting him get away with this, I'm putting the other deer in danger. He'll kill this one out of season. He'll figure maybe he can kill some more. To save Shiloh, I'm making it harder for deer. I swallow. All I got to do, though, is think of the way he'd look at me. I ever give him back to Judd, and then I get on with my job. When we get to the trailer at last, we carry the deer around to the three-sided shed Judd's got in his backyard. First thing Judd does is bleed the dough, keep the meat from spoiling. Then he goes out and messes up the tracks with his foot, kicking up the grass where we'd matted it down and covering the trail of blood with dust. I get home from work every day at three, Judd says, and I want you to be here when I pull up. You work for me two hours a day, five days a week. I want that wood back there stacked. I want the weeds cut and the grass mowed. I want my beans picked, the corn hoed. Whatever I think of to be done, that's what you do. And I want you here starting tomorrow. I'll be here, I says. But I want it in writing that after I do 20 hours work for you, Shiloh belongs to me. Travers grunts and goes in his trailer. He comes out with a piece of grocery sack and the words Beagle Hunting Dog to Marty Preston for 20 hours work. J. Travers. It occurs to me suddenly that maybe after I do the work, he'll try to pay me off with one of his other dogs. Right Shiloh, I tell him. He gives me a pained look and crosses out Beagle, writes Shiloh in its place, but don't spell it right. Leaves off the H at the end. I take the paper and put it in my pocket. I'll be here tomorrow, I say. And you ever tell anyone about this, dear boy, you're going to be more than sorry you open your lips. You got my word, I say, which, considering all the lying I've been doing lately, didn't seem like it amounted to much. It did, though. I walk away from Judd's trailer in sort of a zigzag line, half expecting a bullet in my back any moment, even though I'm pretty sure he wouldn't. Soon as I'm out of sight, though, I race through the woods, heart going thumpity-thump. 
can't keep the smile back no longer. Shiloh's mine. The words keep coming back again and again. He's safe. Should feel even more joyful, though. Thought once if I could just get Shiloh for my own, it would be the finest day of my life. In a way it is, in a way it isn't. Could be Judd gave in because he couldn't think of nothing else at the moment to do. Said I could have Shiloh just because he needed some help with that deer. Could be that once he got rid of the evidence, he'd tell me to go ahead and get the warden, that I wasn't to have the dog. Could even say he never wrote that on that grocery sack, that I'd wrote it myself. I don't think so, though. What worries me most is that Judd could go through with the bargain, give Shiloh to me, but then someday, when Shiloh's running free in the woods by himself, Judd might put a bullet in his head just to spite me.